LBCC proudly supports Long Beach Reads One Book 2006. This year's book is My California, Journeys by Great Writers, edited by Donna Wares. LBCC proudly joins the Long Beach Reads One Book project by providing a California moment featuring LBCC colleagues. I'm reading Almost Home by Gerald Haslam, which is about Oildale, California, which is a suburb of Bakersfield, my hometown. I found that story to be sad and funny and have a lot of true elements to it. Um, one of the things that Haslam talks about is the fact that people from Bakersfield aren't really from Bakersfield, they're from somewhere else. And uh, my family is certainly an example of that. On one side of the family, my grandparents came from Oklahoma and Texas and were sort of the stereotypical Okies who left that area of the country during the Dust Bowl and came to Bakersfield to do migrant farm work, uh, picking cotton and that sort of thing. And I actually knew my great-grandmother, uh, who lived to be 90, and she picked cotton <laughs> too, which I always found hard to believe as a child because it seemed like so much hard work, but she did it. I also thought it was interesting the way Haslam talked about the river. Uh, the river seemed so beautiful and benign to him, and I was raised, uh, my parents always said, don't go in the river, don't go in the river, and so I ended up being scared to go in the river, and I had friends who went on these inner tube rides and had little drinking parties and this sort of thing down at the river, and I just wouldn't go because I was scared to death of the river. Uh, I don't know if most people know that the Kern River as origin is in Mount Whitney and it is the fastest falling river in the United States and so it flows really quickly. Uh, a lot of, um, what's it called, kayakers, professional kayakers come and practice on parts of the Kern River because it's so dangerous. I think it's category five which is the highest parts of it. And so it's full of boulders and it looks calm and underneath it has a huge undertow. It's really quite dangerous. Uh, it's so dangerous that when you go into the Kern River Canyon there's a sign which announces how many people have died in the Kern River since 1960 something I believe. And it's up to I think almost 200 now. It used to be you know 58 or something when I was a kid and now it's 178. And it's always, we always joke about them too, it always seems to be people from LA coming to party in the Kern River and they don't realize how actually dangerous it is because it flows so quickly and it disguises itself. It's kind of a creepy river. It's beautiful to look at from the side, but I never go in it because my parents taught me well not to go in the Kern River because it was so dangerous. Hi, I'm Don Marcy. I'm a stage technician here at Long Beach City College at the Theater Arts Department. I've just read Cotton Candy Mirrors by Devorah Major. It's one of a number of stories in My California, Journeys by Great Writers. If I may, I'd like to read a little passage from uh, Devorah Major's essay on My California. I learned from the mirrors at the beginning of the funhouse to the mirrors at the end, not to take reflections too seriously as the real thing. In fact, I don't even look at regular mirrors too often these days, now knowing that the right lighting can hide any number of sins or reveal any detail of abuses. I've learned to use the eyes of others as my mirrors, but only those people whose eyes are clear and shine with laughter and love. Deborah Major uh, spends quite a bit of time on her little essay on the mirrors, the all distorted mirrors and the hall of mirrors reflecting on her and, and how they would flatten her and lengthen her and fatten her. And I know as a technician in theater, these have always been quite a big hit for people. So I've even made some of them. It's uh, not that hard a process to make a distorted mirror and uh, the results are usually hysterical at any kind of a party or if you're having a, a backyard carnival yourself by shaping you know, uh, plexiglass mirrors, whatever, to do whatever you want to. I'm Don Marcy, and this has been my California Moment.
I'm Dr. Gary Scott, Dean of the School of Creative Arts and Applied Sciences at Long Beach City College, and this is my California moment. I was born in Pasadena, California, which I suppose makes me somewhat unusual in that it seems like nobody in California was born here, everybody came here. So I'm one of those folks whose story is really that of the native. I'm the oldest of five boys, and my memories of California are being able to do so many wonderful things. It was basketball and baseball games late into the warm summer nights. It, was, it seemed like dinner every night outside on our patio and, and celebrating the beautiful California weather. It was driving up 395, leaving at 4 o'clock in the morning when it was dark and watching the sunrise in Mojave, having breakfast at White's Cafe on our way to Rock Creek, just north of Bishop, to go fishing. It was being able to come home after work at 5 o'clock, put the skis on the car, go up to Summit, ski, come back, and go to work the next day because you could. It was going to Joshua Tree and climbing on, on the rocks and seeing the beautiful desert uh, and, and back home in the same day. So California to me is magic. It's the magic of music, of food, of dance, of culture, of color, of opportunity, of extraordinary beauty, and it's home. It always has been. This is Dr. Gary Scott, and that's my California moment. Hi, my name is Dr. Richard Jennings and uh, I'm a member of the Long Beach City College Department of English. I've been a blues musician, however, and uh, have been living that lifestyle since 1962. So it's been a long time for me and played a lot of dives, got a lot of stories behind those dives. One time I got a, a gig, I'm not going to mention the name of the place because they might not like it too much, but I got a gig over in El Segundo down in Old Town. And this was kind of a happening bar. Third time we came in there, it was coming up on a full moon and things were a little froggy all over the place. Band members were a little irritable. Things didn't seem to be going as smoothly as they were in the past and so on. But we got all set up and we started our gig, you know, with the song by Lewis Myers called Top of the Harp. And everybody seemed to fall into the mood. Now this is one of those bars where the drunks do show up in cabs, just like, you know, way down at uh, Culver City at the Tattletale. And uh, it could be a pretty depressing place. Well, one of the drunks showed up with a, uh, one of those little tiny bicycles with a banana seat and no shoes on. And so we started playing and doing a good job. People liked it. And these people got froggy, these two guys, and they got right up in front of the stage and started yelling. And they, they wanted a song by Stevie Ray Vaughan. Well, we could play all kinds of songs, and my guitar player knew the sky is crying, at least Stevie Ray's version of it. And so we, we just jumped right into that song, and we played a song for them. Well, they dropped back by the bar, and my guitar player had some Irish blood in him. He was a little hot-headed, and he didn't like what they were doing, so he jumped off the stage, and he went right up to them, right up at the bar, and started playing The Sky is Crying right in their faces. Beautiful music, you know. But it really kind of made them look like uh, they weren't very cool, you know. They made them look like a couple of jerks. And they had to kind of rejoin the human race. Well, you know, a little tussle broke out and some drinks were smacked on the floor and there was glass all over the place. Before bar time was over, before we had the last call, I said to the boys, you know what, we gotta blow this place. We gotta get out of here as soon as we can because there's only trouble gonna happen here. Uh, so we started loading out a little bit early and got things loaded up. The bass player was loading out and I had a big bass player, he was from Texas. He had about 6'3 frame, he probably weighed 270. right? And it was muscle. And he walked outside and one of those guys had come back with a gun. And the other guy had a broken pool cue. And the bass player walked out carrying a bass amp underneath his left arm. And he said, you guys screwed up my day so much. If you don't put those things away, I'm going to shove them where the sun don't shine. So you better put those things away and get out of here right now. And both of these guys scattered down the alleyway where his truck was. About five minutes later, police were showing up. Now, when that kind of thing happens, you got to cut your losses and run. The only thing I got out of that was a good song called Bar Fight.
Hello, my name is Adrian Novotny. I'm a professor of anthropology at Long Beach City College, and it's my pleasure today to briefly discuss one of the articles in My California by a personal friend of mine, DJ Waldy, his, in his article, An Ordinary Place. I'd been living in California for many years. I've been out here about 40 years now. And I'm originally from Ohio. And in Ohio, there are major differences between urban centers uh, in Ohio and in California. One thing, for example, growing up, I remember a, a full-length porch in the front of each home. And families would sit out there, especially on warm summer evenings, and interact with one another. We'd talk to the kids. and as children would run around the neighborhood and go up and drink some lemonade at different families homes and so on it was great the homes were also spaced in such a way that we had fairly large lots so there was a lot of green space almost every home had a garden in the back and when I moved to California frankly I felt a sense of loss you know the architecture here no front porches you know high walls that seemed to to separate and isolate people. Tiny lots and, and homes 10 feet apart. I was, I was really upset with that. I thought, you know, that's just not fair. It's, it's interfering with socialization and so on. And I carried that view for many years until I read Don Waldy's works. And Don showed me the beauty of living in California tracts. And since I've been here for 40 years or so, most of my homes were located in such tracts and and Don showed me the beauty the the very the poetry of living in tracts in California I I wasn't that familiar with the history Don helped with that through his books showing me that there was a vast improvement in the quality of life for so many people who moved here from places that were tiny you know, rural areas and they they moved into these beautiful places where, in Don's words, people began to get their, their portion of the American dream. You know, they, they reached almost middle class. And I, I just think that's beautiful. What I like most about Don's work, I think, is his poetic style. He, he writes stories of very mundane city life in such a way that they're award winners, one and all. I strongly encourage you to read Don's article and his book. I think he just did a magnificent job of describing what it's like to be in California. My name is Adrian Novotny and that's, those are a few comments on my California. Thank you. My name is Phyllis Adias, and I teach in the Learning and Academic Resources Department at Long Beach City College, and this is my California moment. I was born and raised in Palm Springs, California. My family immigrated to the United States from Mexico in the late 1800s and some in the early 1900s as a result of the Mexican Revolution, um, and many of them settled actually in Los Alamitos. They worked in the sugar beet factories in Los Alamitos for a number of years. And in the late 1920s, when the, the sugar beets contracted a disease and the sugar beet industry um, basically was destroyed, my grandfathers looked for work and they found work in the desert. And so both sides of my family moved to Palm Springs in the late 1920s. Growing up in the desert was a fairly unique experience. I remember playing uh, as a child in the desert, even in the summer when it's 120 degrees. Um, we had total freedom. We ran and we played and we, we spent you know, as much time as we could outdoors. Play for me was walking to the end of the block um, and there was the great expanse of the, the whole desert in front of me. Uh, playing in the sand, digging holes in the sand, avoiding rattlesnakes, um, stepping onto sticker patches and having to come home and have mom remove the stickers. Um, it was a great experience. When I visit the desert today, um, I'm really kind of sad because the desert has grown so much and, and even the desert climate has changed as a result of development and golf courses and, and such. And so it's, it's not the same as it was so many years ago when I was a child. Just recently I attended a uh, picnic uh, sponsored by the Palm Springs Historical Society where the 12 original Mexican families who settled in, in the desert were honored. And I'm proud to say that um, 
two, actually three of those families um, are my family. And um, as I was driving home uh, back to, to Long Beach from, from the desert, I was saddened and because I, I really was sad to see that experience, my desert experience as a child, um, not be available to, to children today. I'd really like children to have that kind of experience of, of the freedom of feeling safe running through the desert and, and, and having that kind of experience. This is Phyllis Adias, and that's my California moment. Hi, my name is Carmen Chestnut, and this is my California moment. My California moment actually consists of a block of time when I was in college and I had a lot of time on my hands between classes and I utilized that time to enjoy the galleries, the art galleries and the museums of Southern California. There are many art galleries in Santa Monica along Robertson Boulevard and um, there are also wonderful museums such as the Norton Simon Museum uh, the Museum of Contemporary Arts and the Natural Museum of, of the Museum of Natural History. But um, a few um, uh, fine works of art that stand out in my mind are the architecture structures, um, such as the Gamble House uh, by Green and Green in Pasadena. As a matter of fact, um, that particular home. Uh, was a, provided a real serene experience for me as I walked throughout the home that sort of resembled a fine oak tree um, in my perspective. And um, it enabled me to stop and smell the roses regarding um, Southern California. It's easy to uh, ride on the freeways and miss these wonderful resources that Southern California has. Um, but if you take the time out to visit the galleries and um, different um, architecture um, uh, structures, architectural structures that are available for public tours, uh, it will enable you to really appreciate uh, some of the fine uh, artwork that we have here in California. I'm Carmen Chestnut. That's my California moment. Hi, I'm Margaret Shannon and I'm a professor in the English department at Long Beach City College and this is my California moment. I really liked um, a couple of excerpts from my California. I like Thomas Steinbeck's piece. A uh, line in particular I really like is um, uh, actually precedes the essay and he says that in his essay he'll illustrate that the brilliance and energy of a rational dream inevitably fades and in nature's season becomes little more than a source myth to succeeding generations. Um, the other essay I really liked is uh, Devorah Major's um, cotton candy mirrors and she talks about how um, her experience at a place uh, a kind of uh, fun land play land uh, carnival-esque type of place was really a, a summer school a place of learning I find that my life itself has been kind of circusy as was indeed my mother's life and my father's life. And I think that's what originally brought them to California. They were not born in California, but they came to California because they were searching for that, that myth that Steinbeck talks about, that myth, that promise that Steinbeck says we each project onto the landscape of California. Um, I was born here uh, and I was supposed to reap the benefits uh, of the California promise that my parents envisioned, but of course shortly after I was born um, they saw that those dreams that they thought California would bring were not uh, on the horizon. I feel that, uh, that Steinbeck is right, that the, that the, he says at one point, 
that California, um, he calls uh, a she here, he says, and like the seduction of the muses, she, California, always appears in the garb of our own desires, giving each a familiar loving reflection of oneself. And California has indeed given me a very, very loving reflection of myself that I uh, seek daily, as Devorah Major says, in the eyes of others. I'm Margaret Shannon, and that's my California moment. Hi, I'm Lee Douglas, the Department Head for Learning and Academic Resources at Long Beach City College. And this is my California moment. My California moment is actually a series of moments that have really helped to shape who I am, how I view life, and how I've come to choose the career that I have chosen. I'm not a native Californian, but I have spent most of my life here. And as I was growing up, we didn't spend a lot of time traveling outside of the Los Angeles area, but I do remember one particular trip that really had an impact on me. We visited a place called Allensworth, California. And I'd never heard of the place. Never read about it in any of my history books, never heard about it in any of my history classes that I'd taken. And I did not really understand why until I got there. Allensworth is a place, it's a town, it's a colony actually, that was, that's a little bit north of Bakersfield, just before you get to Fresno. And it was the first city in California that was founded, financed, and governed by black Americans. And as I stepped foot on, on the town, on the grounds there at Allensworth, it really changed my life. And it really, it really opened my eyes to the, the power of wanting better and wanting more. And the, probably the, the biggest impact that day was when I visited the two, little two-room schoolhouse. And as I visited, I could really sense the history, the power, the knowledge that had passed through those doors. And I, in a sense, on that day, I decided that I wanted to go into the field of education. And even though many of the people that, there in that town, they were former slaves, they weren't allowed to be educated for the most part up until that point, they educated themselves. And that little two-room schoolhouse were doctors, future lawyers, future, future leaders were trained and taught right there at Allensworth. I, for myself, I've, I've decided to make a trip to Allensworth a family tradition for my family. So every year, my, my sons and I, my wife, we visit Allensworth because I, I really want to pass this, this knowledge on this history on, so they will understand the sacrifices and what can come from a belief, from a vision, wanting better. That's my California moment. I'm Lee Douglas. My name is Na'an Pham. I'm a librarian at Long Beach City College, and this is my California moment. I immigrated here in the 1980s, and the first two words that I knew were thank you and bathroom. And our family, we lived in Los Angeles, and we live in a very, very poor neighborhood. But to us, it was wonderful because we had a roof over our head and that was enough. And um, I rode the bus to school every day and it was a new experience for me. But the one thing that I was really afraid was at recess, I was so lonely and I would be in the corner and watching groups of kids chatting and laughing away. And here I am in my little corner not knowing anything because to me what they were saying was completely foreign. And I spent four years studying English, uh, going to ESL classes. And it was not until my 10th grade that I was able to um, go into regular English classes. And that was a milestone for me. I actually have friends, I could talk to people now. And I remember my first writing installments for my English teachers. Um, it was 
I wrote stories about my village back in Vietnam and my English teacher, um, he was very surprised and he told me that all he knew about my country, Vietnam, was the war, that he knew that it was a war-torn country, but that from my little stories, he was able to see how life in a village was, that it was so different, that it was not almost um, untouched by the war. Today, I live in Little Saigon, and uh, it's a little Vietnamese community in Orange County, and there we, uh, we have the flavor and the culture. I teach Sunday school. I teach uh, little Vietnamese kids who grew up here, who were born here. Uh, I teach them Vietnamese. And uh, because I remember my, my English teacher, Mr. McKinley, she told me this one thing. Um, you have to take the beauties of both cultures into your life. Um, master the English language, but at the same time, uh, be proud of your cultural heritage. And I did just that. I'm Na'an Pham, and that's my California moment. My name is William Diaz Brown. I'm an adjunct history instructor here at Long Beach City College. And I was asked to speak on My California, a couple of stories from My California. And the first one that I'm going to speak on is called Montalvo Myths and Dreams of Home by Thomas Steinbeck. When I left school, I was about uh, 23 years old, and I'm from Southern California. Um, not originally from here, but I was um, raised here from the time I was a young boy. Um, and I was living in Northern California. Um, kind of looking for a job and things to do, and also um, uh, looking to travel and do different things. And I'd always wanted to ride my bike down the coast, and so I wasn't having a good time finding work up in Northern California, and somebody had offered me a job in Southern California, so I thought the best way to get down there would be to hop on my bike and ride all the way to Southern California. And so um, I rode down Pacific Coast Highway, which is the one which just hugs the coast all the way. And I can remember going through Big Sur, and um, I agree with the author in that there is something about it compared to other places in California that it has a very magical quality about it in that there aren't a lot of people when you're going through there, and it's a very majestic and rough and rugged landscape. And um, as I rode my bike along the coast, I can remember um, the ocean waves, the color of the ocean hitting the, the rocks, it's a, it goes from deep blue to white to, um, to kind of a, a turquoise bluish where the surf hits the rocks. And that's on your right side as you're going south. And then on your left side, you have massive hills heading straight up very precipitously and um, covered in green and shrouded in fog when I was going through there, which was I think in about September. And I also remember as I was riding that the monarch butterflies were in migration going south. And so wherever I was riding on, on my bike, which I was riding about eight to 10 hours a day, um, there would be butterflies all over the place. And um, I remember coming to one particularly huge chasm where they had a span bridge that goes over. You see this bridge sometimes on television commercials. And uh, it's only a narrow two lane bridge. But as you go across it, I had to get off the bike and and walk it across because I felt a little bit higher than the guardrail and it looked like it was about a 400 foot drop down where the chasm comes and there's water coming that goes into the ocean and uh, it was just uh, uh, just such a, a, a beautiful um, vista and uh, as I rode my bike uh, and I kept going I remember also seeing waterfalls come off of the cliffs and go down to these rocky beaches and um, enormous hills. So th that's my recollection of, of Big Sur and, and the experience that I had with it. I'm William Diaz Brown and that's my California moment. Long Beach Reads One Book is sponsored by the Long Beach Public Library Foundation. 27 of California's best authors depict the diversity of California through this personal journey. All proceeds benefit the California Arts Council. Book Week is March 12th through 18th, 2006. 
find out more by visiting the Long Beach Public Library Foundation website or the LBCC Library website.